The real challenge of, of plant poisonings is that many paddocks that we, get, we look at have at least one or two um, poisonous plants in them. And yet, not all stock die from plant poisonings. The reason for this is that there are occasions uh, when plants become more attractive to grazing species. We have a challenge in that most paddocks have one or two, at least, poisonous plants in them. And yet, under normal circumstances, stock don't die from them. We're going to talk about those situations in which uh, plants can be more attractive to stock and indeed where plant poisonings can occur. I'd like to start with one that you're familiar with, and that's bracken fern. It's very common. It's also our most common plant poisoning on the north coast. Now, ordinarily, cattle won't touch this. However, if you slash or burn, then the new croziers will grow through. That's these little shoots. Not only are these more toxic, but they're also far more attractive to cattle to eat. This plant is cycad, also known as macrosamia. This can be toxic to cattle after a burn, and it comes away very quickly indeed, may be the only green pick available for cattle at that time. And unfortunately, when they eat it, uh, there's a good chance that they're going to be poisoned by it. This is night flowered jasmine, which is one of the sestrums. It is taking over large tracts of country on the north coast, um, and the circumstances in which we see this poisoning occur is after a shower of rain. Sheep, goats and cattle are attracted to it then and that's when poisonings occur. It's very similar to green sestrum but the big difference is that the uh, fruit is white rather than black. This is a plant I'm sure you're all familiar with. This is the avocado. Now the fruit is not toxic of course, we eat it. However, the leaves are toxic to all our grazing species and contain a powerful heart toxin. Circumstances in which pl uh, plant poisonings occur with this are not so much when livestock has access to it all the time, but when they break into an orchard and experience it for the first time. This plant of course is fireweed and many of you will be familiar with it. We often see paddocks that are covered in fireweed and yet the stock in there don't succumb to poisoning. The time that we do see poisoning with this is when it's been slashed. And with that fresh young growth that comes through, cattle are unable to discriminate between the fireweed and the surrounding grass and can eat quite large amounts of it. And that's when poisoning occurs. This is Mother Amelians. It's in flower at the moment, which is winter time. And it's another plant that becomes more attractive to livestock when it's flowering. It's very rarely eaten in the young stage, but when it comes up to flowering, the sugars move in the plant and becomes far more attractive to livestock. And unfortunately, that's when uh, poisonings can occur with this. This is oleander. Now, ordinarily, stock won't touch this because the sap on it is so bitter. However, the glycoside in it, when the plant's wilted for a few days, is converted to glucose, which is sweet and attractive to livestock. And that's when our plant, uh, poisonings occur with this plant. This is black bean, and the seed of this can be toxic to cattle. Aboriginal people would crush the seed and soak it for several days in order to remove the toxin, because as, as, as little as one seed can be toxic to humans. However, cattle can consume quite large quantities of this seed without ill effects. In fact, for a weaner, it takes around a bucket full of seed to be toxic, and for grown cattle, about two bucketfuls. The purpose of this video is to be aware of plants and plant poisonings, and there are many that I haven't included in today's session. More information is available in the North Coast Local Land Services publication Beef Cattle Health and Husbandry on the North Coast. It is available as a PDF downloadable from our website or alternatively as a hard copy from our offices. Mm -hmm.